Hey everyone, it's Mike from Roxbox90 here, back with another video. This one, we're going to talk about a number of different news, speculative items that are have come up and are coming up for the Magic community. And the first I wanted to talk about was an article posted by Mark Rosewater. Now, if you haven't seen this article before, it's called The Future of Magic, and I will link it down below in the description. This is part of his Making Magic series, where you can learn about how those in charge of magic development think about magic and mark is one of the key players in that space if you haven't checked out his drive to work podcast that's another good place you can to find out his thoughts as well as the wider wizards team in this case he goes through a number of different areas of how they are thinking about the future of magic the gathering where is the game going what are some ways that they can expand and grow what they already have and this card game which is decades old what are the how can they expand the space and grow further now i'm not going to go through the whole article because you should just read it yourself it's very interesting the thing i found interesting was that the commander collection green was rescheduled for december 4th this is important because we know coming out we have double masters coming this august we have commander product for zendikar we have zendikar rising itself then we have coming after that we have the commander legends and this is all before we hit true holiday season the commander collection green is almost like those the player collections it's kind of like those in that it's a eight card reprint box it's thematic and it'll probably have one more expensive card and then some others that are just typical playable within the color and that's a lot less important than making sure that you're stocked up with your commander legends that you want to get out there and your double masters that you want to get out there and send a card. I mean, you realize they've lined up so many sets in such a short time that pre-COVID, which is when they plan these things, it would have been fine. But post-COVID, with other product, I'll get to it in a minute because we're about to talk about Jumpstart, we've seen so many challenges that it's a question of what are they doing? How are they going to manage the flow of printing that they want to get out there? And so this has been moved forward. If there's one thing they have to sacrifice, it'll be this Commander Collection we push forward into December. Now, the reason it's interesting to me, because they really want Commander Legends to land, which is incredible, because I'm looking forward to that set a lot. But more importantly is that, was there another product? Lots of people have speculated about this. It's not, I'm not the first one by any means. Lots of people have spoke, speculated that Wizards did not plan a December set. Now, if you remember, we did have Ultimate Masters in the past, This the end of the year capstone set to really push for push Q4 into overdrive, deliver a great end of the year PL statement to shareholders and Hasbro. And it did that in spades. So the question of course is this year was if they had already pre-planned before COVID, it would be a real shocker if they didn't have anything capstoning the year. Now maybe Commander Legends is that capstone, I don't know. But it was seemed deliberately odd. So I would think that there would be an that there would have been another set of some kind. Now by pushing this forward into December begs the question of, is something like that actually going to appear? Is that actually going to happen? Or have they internally, since they never announced a set for December or, or anything, a sp expansion, nothing, that they'll just push it forward into Q1 and that way they won't have to deal with, uh, you know, January through March, they won't have to deal with having this overlap and it'll give them some breathing room to manage and get back on track. What was interesting was around, there was a jumpstart update where the, there's been a whole host of issues with jumpstart, everything from mass misprints that have been propping up all over the place in the products to not having products shipped in a timely manner stated that they had a big back-end problem which means like that when they worked with wizards directly the distributors are working with wizards wizards told them don't worry it's going to be a four box case that you're going to be shipping and selling and the truth was it wasn't a four box case it was a six box case now if you've pre-sold sealed cases at four a box to people who want to keep them sealed for for value and for down the road investment you can't just tell them hey you know we'll cut open the the six pack boxes and give you your four boxes that's that's not what they bought it for they bought a four box case to keep it and if you give them a six box case well what do you do do you charge them more what what rate do you charge them how does that work do you just refund and then you have to deal with mass refunds it's a huge huge mess disaster that they have to figure out and work through. Now, Mark Rose commented on Twitter and said, don't worry, it's a printed to demand set. We'll probably have second or third wave down the road as we figure out our printing things. But the truth of the matter is, let's be clear here, this was a huge mess. So, and this will probably impact the pricing in the short term, 
both between the amount of misprints that are popping up, so people are a little nervous to open up their, their packs, and not just in terms of the quality of the products, but also in terms of the pricing of the cards. They're just going to be more expensive and difficult to get a hold of than we initially thought. A while ago, someone had posted and said, hey, you know, I know somebody who's a Norse mythology expert who was hired to consult with wizards about Viking stuff. Norse mythology. Couldn't go into detail, of course, because of NDA or whatever. This is not a surprise to anyone <laughs> that wizards would be thinking about Norse mythology because they've done the Greeks, they've done Greco-Roman, they've done ancient Egypt, they've done numerous sets. I would say this opens the door, if they were to do a Norse set in the next year or two, that it would open the door to a number of things. And as mentioned in this thread, it could be snow, snow and snow thematic elements could be brought back you could have, it could be berserkers, giants, a number of different things could come back. And most importantly, they talk about the concept of new gods. But you know what they haven't really done? They haven't done a god sort of cycle for creatures. So if I had to put my bet on it, I would say that they were going to do some sort of god related theme for a Norse set, it would probably be creature heavy, creature related. And the last thing I'll mention here is around Magic the Gathering Arena historic rollout. Now, if you guys, I'm not a big into arena. I don't know a whole lot about it. I don't play it. I just don't have the time to do that. But uh, historic seems to me to be a really interesting opportunity for wizards because Pioneer has had some problems. It's become, to some degree, a very combo heavy format, which was one of modern's biggest issues for a long time was how degenerate some of the decks became, which pushed out any sort of notion of fair decks, made the tier one decks much less interesting to watch, much less interesting to play over time, and Pioneer's running into some of those problems now. So one of the problems that Wizards has is what do you do if you really want to embrace Pioneer and make it digital? You need to backfill dozens of sets in your card base, and they that takes a lot of work and time, and it's really looking in the past, it's not looking forward where they have to do every new set, and if they keep putting out sets at the rate they are, then Arena has more than its work cut out for it to keep it going, let alone trying to backfill whole sets, where most of this stuff is not even going to be relevant to the, the current standards that are in Arena. But what makes Historic interesting is that they call it a digital-first non-rotating format, not a digital-only format. You could foresee if Historic does really well, then this would be great for them because it would be pseudo pioneer not quite but it would be over time you give it another couple years it'd be almost like pioneer and yet it's allowed to bring back every quarter they can have card drops planned and they can bring back historical cards from historical cards from different areas of magic and have them roll into the formats which allows them to disrupt things it's almost like when you have the banned and unbanned cards happen when a card gets banned and a card gets unbanned it kind of messes with the format for a bit and everyone has to readjust and changes the whole meta and makes things interesting again that sort of thing could happen more or less all the time in historic not that all the decks would be completely unseated but it would allow wizards to carefully select curate cards from over time and not have to backfill so many sets where the majority of the cards are not going to be relevant to their formats so i think kind of think historic is more the future of where things will be going versus what's currently happening with Pioneer. Interesting to see how those two formats play out. But of course, these are all my speculative thoughts on these topics. I'd love to hear yours. If you want to go down the like button your way down, drop a comment. Let me know what you think about things. And as always, it's Mike from Rocksbox90. I'm signing out. I'll see you guys next time.